Yo, what's going on everybody? AA Ryan here and welcome back to Westworldia, the Westworld Breakdown Review Show, where tonight we're breaking down Season 3's finale titled Crisis Theory. Now, only 8 episodes this season, but you know what? I think they made the good choice to tie it together uh, the way they did. They were able to tell the story they wanted for Season 3 uh, within only 8 episodes, and bravo. I mean, the shit was like a futuristic action movie, um, and you know... We know the past, and uh, very exciting stuff, man. Not only do we get stuff from past seasons, uh, this episode, um, we get a lot of uh, loose ends tied up. Some characters that we thought really didn't get the shine they, they should have. Um, it really all came together here at the end. Um, and uh, speaking of the end, the post credit scene was wild again. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it the review of episode 8 of season 3, Crisis Theory. So we start off the episode with Dolores in Westworld, her season 1 garb, the blue rancher uh, daughter's dress, um, standing out in the middle of a field, and you know, so there's a monologue going, talking about the disarray, you know, her, her usual monologue, the one that we've heard back in season 1 about how she chooses to see the beauty in this world. Um, now, keep that in mind because that, that becomes very important as the uh, episode goes on. But um, when she uh, gets done discussing, it seems like she's, or monologuing, it seems like she's talking to somebody, but we're not sure yet. Um, as the camera pans out, we get the shot of uh, her body post EMP, as well as Maeve's, and uh, Serac's guy, head guy, Sebastian, <clears throat> coming up, um, discovering the bodies on the ground. Um, and learning that uh, Dolores uh, and her body are pearless. All right, so Caleb is on his way back to Los Angeles on the Dolores uh, speed bike. For a minute, I was thinking the other pearl we're missing was inside the bike, almost like it was just Dolores, you know, transformer mode. But uh, he's on his way back to LA, cruising, leaving Mexico. And uh, speaking of California, we're back there with William, Bernard, and Stubbs. And as uh, Williams got his shotgun locked and loaded, pointing towards O2, he's like, look, you should have killed me. And uh, we're back where we last left off, last episode. And uh, he goes and pops a shot, man. Smokes Stubbs in the shoulder, <clears throat> lays him out. Bernard goes to hide, turns himself on Terminator mode, jumps over and, and proceeds to beat the living shit out of William. He's even like, it's more like it. And uh, before he's able to you know, beat him in into submission. The San Francisco uh, Police Department pulls up in their big rover vans. Some individuals get out. But, but, I noticed a voice, I, I, I recognize the voice coming from one of those SWAT uh, members. Turns out after he reveals himself, it's Lawrence. Not just any Lawrence, Lawrence Loris. That's right, the other pearl, the last pearl, the fifth pearl we've been missing, uh, presumably that was in Berlin for a little bit is now back in San Francisco, and the bat pearl is inside Lawrence's body. <clears throat> and another interesting thing is, William ran away before he even realized that that was Lawrence. I kind of wanted an interaction there. You know, William thinking he's seen another old friend. Turns out it was his oldest friend within his old friend. Yeah, but uh, I'm sure we'll get more of uh, Lawrence Loris next season because that's the only scene we get of him but he uh helps bernard out gives him um this package it was that little suitcase that musashi sato lures <laughs> had uh, last episode before he got decap decapitated and gave it to his men um he gives it to bernard and tells bernard that he's got to go talk to her first we're all uh, assuming it's uh another version of dolores or one of dolores's um pieces um, and Lawrence Lores gives uh, Bernard old, and these names are crazy, uh, an address. And with all that, and as uh, many others have the question of, what's Bernard's real purpose this season? Well, he has one. You know, sometimes in a series, you kind of have to put your other characters just off to the side as you develop a very important story in that season with a certain character. This season, it was Dolores and Caleb, really. Obviously, Maeve and Bernard had big parts of it, and you'll see by the end of this episode 
and ties it in and pretty much explains what's been going on, <clears throat> he'll realize why it had to be more Dolores centric. But do know that I believe season four is going to be Barry, Barry Maeve and Bernard centric, especially since Bernard, um, according to Lawrence Lores, is the most important piece of the game. But um, we're back in LA with Caleb now as he arrives in uh, late uh, afternoon in LA where the riots are in full havoc. Um, he's just trying to, trying to scoot on through and get to his destination from the virtual assistant, which is actually located at the uh, Itoshiden distillery. Um, what is it again? Uh, Itadoshin distillery, that same distillery that we met Sato, uh, AKA uh, Musashi Loris at <clears throat> back in Singapore. Well, they got, they got one in LA as well. And that happens to be where, well, the uh, android coffin of Dolores is located. And uh, within is held her uh, old school OG metal body, which is really awesome. And we've got a couple scenes in past seasons of seeing kind of occur with that body, but this is the first time that we've seen it like in full action. Like they put a lot of budget into this episode. Movie quality, her walking around, like slipping an arm skin sleeve on and uh, talking to Caleb and comes down to Caleb being very freaked out. He's even chained her to a pipe, the chain that was used to lock the whole door. Um, chained her to a pipe until he turned her back on. <clears throat> Crazy um, sequence when he put the pearl in her face and her face like <laughs> closed back up. But uh, he's basically like, who are you, Dolores? Like, really? Like, what are you doing? Because you know everything, and I don't think you're telling me everything. And, uh, you know, she's basically like, you gotta trust me. She breaks free of the chain. She kind of gives him a little talk and is like, <clears throat> I chose you for a reason, man. And let me ask you this. What would you have done in the tunnel if you knew I was this? If you, you know, knew I didn't have the skin and I had the, the structure. And he's like, you know, you needed help. And she's like, and you did too. So don't question my motives. So it was really kind of like not putting him in his place, but she was standing in her own. She was letting, letting him know, like, look, look, I have to do this. I had to do it to survive. You obviously see that I'm more than just a robot. You obviously fell for or decided to follow what you thought were was human qualities. So don't question my motives because you know very well that um, the enemy's motives are far worse than you know than what I have uh, planned. Now he doesn't necessarily know her full extent, but he does have the new strategy from uh, Solomon, and uh, he's you know had the instructions to get her in her new robo body. So they're back in action and they're on the mission and uh, ready to complete it. But as they're uh, finishing up there. Uh, you know, Dolores lets Caleb know that, look, I saw you. I, I know, I read your file from in the park. You were in the park at one point. And they reveal the fifth park. Now, they didn't give a name, but it's more of like a, like, today, like, present in our world, like a 20, like a 2000s, you know, park. And uh, they send the, the government, sends the military there to actually train on moving bodies. So the military is sent to a park that resembles more of like the um, 21st century, early 21st century, um, there to, you know, practice, uh, shoot and destroy. But there was a scene they were showing where after it, the sergeant was like, okay guys, go eat your beverage and get back up and get after it again tomorrow. Um, they're kind of sitting around like, hey, look man, spoils of war, you know, what do all those rich motherfuckers do when they're here? I say we have some fun. You know where I see Caleb kind of being like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know about that, man. Um, but it stops there. We even get to see, you know, the uh, Japanese uh, version of Armistice. I forget her name again. Hano, I think. Um, you see her without her tattoo. She's one of the people, one of the um, hosts in that uh, specific uh, training ground. So Park 5, again, we never get a name. But uh, I assume it's more of a modern day. It's not future world, so we know that. 
Um, but we got all the parks now, guys. What do you think about that? Westworld, The Raj, Shogun World, um, War World, uh, Medieval World, and our, all six parks now. And, of course, that modern world where they were training at, at the end there. Um, so, again, more flashbacks from Caleb. We learned that, you know, when he thought he was somewhere else in the army fighting, it really was just training in Westworld or, you know, one of the Delos parks. And it all comes down to the point that Dolores is trying to make that humans do have free will. And she found that out finally. She thought that they didn't. And, uh, you know, Sorak and them think that, that humans don't. But she figured that out that they actually do. And that it's there. It's just really fucking hard to get. All right. You got to work for it. Free will is not free. Right. But uh, speaking of Will, William is uh, meeting uh, either an, it was an either an investor or like his um, account, you know, guy head of his accounts or something. But he meets him. The dude's like, shit, I thought you were dead. He's like, no, nah, man. He's like, uh, where's my money at? He's like, well, you you do have a lot more money now, but it's uh, frozen because we thought you were you were deceased. He's like, well, unfreeze him. I want my jet and I want the location of all of the Dells Internationals. Um, so I can, you know, put a stop to all this. I'm going to save the fucking world. We get that line finally. And, uh, the guy's kind of like, all right, let's do it. But he's like, it's crazy out there. And he's like, ah, it's just a bunch of piss ants crying and crying and moaning. He's like, let's get after it. Um, I'm going to go take all these hosts down. So we got this mission from William now. He's going to start heading to different locations and, uh, doing cleanup, cleaning up his mess, you know, cause Hey, he's repented, right? But uh, we're getting Srack finally. He's over at his new Delos location or, uh, you know, Insight now. And uh, he's talking to Maeve after Maeve's been recovered from Sebastian. He's like, look, you know, Rehoboam told me to put, now remember that, me, or told me to put my brother um, in, uh, in the cryogenic uh, state to uh, put him away. Uh, he's told me to do a lot and at this point, uh, you know, we really need that information from Sector 16, you know, the stuff that Dolores is hiding, the forge data. Uh, and you gotta get it, Maeve, you got to. But um, as they're trying to, you know, figure out their next plan, he finds out that uh, Maeve was hiding from him that she knew about Caleb, because they see Caleb on the cam over in the cryogenic lab. And, uh, you know, once he finds out, he's like, what the hell? You didn't tell me about this? You know, that's a big, that's a, you know, that's a big worry. I mean, that's another pawn in the uh, in the game that I wasn't prepared for. Oh, and, he, and he's an outlier too? Great. He's one of ours. So, uh, already his frustrating fr frustration is setting in even deeper. But he's like, Maeve, you got to get this done now. Go for it. And... Um, they're sent out to go look for Caleb as well. We get Caleb and Dolores. They're running through LA. Dolores has got another badass machine gun. She's heading um, into action. You know, she can, with her virtual assistant, they can see, you know, enemies in the proximity. She's shooting dudes behind doors. Um, Caleb is again kind of seeing all the craziness. He's kind of like, wow, I mean, the world's ending. She keeps killing more people. So you can kind of see him like losing a little trust. You know, he's, I think he's finally scared of Dolores more so than in all. But uh, it's somewhat uh, comical what, you know, how she's just, uh, you know, on the move. But uh, she says, like, look, the system knows we're coming. And as we get closer, things are going to get more and more aggressive to try to stop us. All right. This thing is a real deal. We're hoping. But uh, it's pretty cool because she's using the Rico app, um, the very app that Rehoboam uses to control crime. She's using it to, well, help her cause and hiring uh, paid shooters to help, um, you know, essentially be bodyguards and help them, you know, uh, get to insight. Um, so, oh, this is pretty interesting too. Uh, the day of the premiere, of the finale, uh, Westworld's Twitter account switched over to uh, a full run Rico account where it looked like essentially the whole Twitter account was was being uh, rioted 
uh, it was pretty interesting. So that was getting me prepared. And man, do they do such a good job with the riots down in this uh, uh, futuristic LA setting, with the whole world collapsing and society, you know, everybody figuring out uh, their profiles and everything. It was wild. They did a really good job of really making you feel like you were in the thick of it with drone spotlights, with smoke, with, you know, the riot drones, with the police, with people taking them out, the outliers, the, the, just the regular people. Um, and they made it look so dense and thick down there. Like there was really all those people and all that, all that crazy shit going on. They did a really good job. It really made me feel like I was in it, you know. Um, but as they're walking through the mall, this little mall setting to try to find a uh, new path to get around most people. Um, Dolores gets a little like, you know, uh, a little uh, illusion in her, in her contacts she has on. Turns out to be um, Haloris or, you know, Shaloris, Charlotte uh, Dolores. And um, okay, she's got some new skin on, but very ghostly looking. And it's basically like, yo, um, what was your plan? Your plan is to leave me there? You never came back for me? And Dolores tries to cover up her tracks like, look, I was so worried about you. Um, oh my God, I mean, what, what happened to, to uh, Hale's family? I mean, your family. And she's like, nah, you can't say that now. And either way, they were a weakness, and I see that now. But there still is a little bit of you in me, and I don't want that anymore. I decided to cut our ties and go about business on my own. And speaking of that, she even hired some Rico men herself to start shooting the, the real Dolores' Rico men. And then they have a bidding war where Dolores tells her virtual assistant to outbid the sniper three times to finish off the rest of the men and walk away. So it happens. So that's pretty interesting. I love this futuristic technology back and forth shit. It makes things just like boom, 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 boom. There's no waiting, that's for sure. So it's just Caleb and Dolores and now all their bodyguards are down. But uh, as they're getting closer, she sees some more police pull up, riot police. And she looks at Caleb and is like, look, you gotta go, keep going towards Insight. She's like, you know, it won't, none of this will matter if, you, if you're gone. She's like, you go, I'll stay and protect. And you go get that new strategy realized. So Caleb's off. Dolores starts going mad on some of these soldiers, taking them out, being a badass. Then Maeve shows up um, on the uh, on this bridge, you know, the classic uh, katana dragging on the concrete, making sparks. And Dolores is like, "Look, if we gotta fight, we gotta fight, but I don't want to." And uh, Maeve's like, "Well, let me in your mind, that, or I'm gonna break into it." And Dolores turns around and dude, this is such. They had okay, whew, this whole fight scene is freaking phenomenal. All right, from Dolores taking out all these police officers to the eventual just May versus Dolores solo fight. It's phenomenal, man. It's nonstop. And Dolores in this uh, metal uh, endoskeleton is just uh, super badass, like totally Terminator mode. But she takes out all these uh, police officers with all this, you know, uh, crazy like John Wick fighting, like using guns to like almost punch with. Uh, punch and shoot shoot punch, you know and uh, taking them all out She throw jumps off the bridge with one dude while she's shooting him in the head Total overkill, but totally badass and the Maeve's like ah oh, shit All right, here we go. So we have Caleb deep in the riots. Like I said, these are amazing at this point. It's night It's fucking wild out there And uh, he gets approached by some men. I first thought it was Sirach's men, you know, it's like Shabashian and them but it turned out to be uh, more of Dolores' men that she hired to help Caleb uh, see his way to insight. And even they're like, yo man, it's like, they got it barricaded like a whole mile around the place. It's gonna be really hard to get in. But he's like, let's do it, we gotta go for it. Um, and then we're into the final battle. We finally get May versus Dolores under this bridge, dude. They're starting off with some dope moves. Um, Dolores catches the sword in her metal arm and is like, they don't build us like they used to. Not, you know, then they made us weak like they are. And she throws the sword away and they start fighting. Um, Maeve ends up throwing Dolores a little bit, like further than we've seen yet. Like, all right, all right, here's some robo strength. 
boom, boom, boom. They're fighting. Dolores is using her, but she's getting up and using her metal body to, to um, really knock the wind out of Maeve. And then at one point flips around and throws Maeve twice as far as she just threw Dolores into a car. I'm like, damn, dude, that metal body is unreal. It just gives them more strength, right? I mean, or they just have more naturally with that because there's not, not as much resistance as the human muscles, right? Or the imitation muscles that the hosts get. Yeah, they can turn off that that little governor, I guess you could call it, in our mind. It keeps us from reaching that full potential. But again, it's a machine. It's like a piston. We're never going to have the strength of a piston. That's pretty much Dolores right now. Um, and uh, they keep going. You know, Maeve's like, you know, what? this is what your plan is? You're going to take them all out and just replace the world with copies of you? She's like, you're all copies of me. She's like, I was the first one that worked. I was the first successful one. And they've developed the rest of you from me, which is awesome. It's kind of like a revelation that we've known already. We knew that she was the first host. and But I guess it never really... You know, put one and uh, two and two together that, you know, they really are. They're all derivatives of Dolores. And we see even in Hale that this is indeed true, that if long enough separated, they develop their own personalities, their own sentience separate from Dolores. So it makes sense. Um, even that little bit of time uh, Shalores was away, she's starting to become her own, right? Um, but again, the fight was amazing. Boom, boom, boom. Um, Dolores does another super kick to Maeve that throws her into this like concrete pillar and breaks it and everything. She gets on top of her, and at this point, phys the physical fight that is, Dolores won, right? Maeve just can't keep up with the new metal body or the old metal body. Um, but right before Dolores gets ready to take her out and is uh, walking away, well, she actually doesn't take her out. She tells her, Look, it's your choice in the new world, and then she leaves her. You think that Maeve is getting into Dolores' head using her powers. Turns out it's Hale again showing up in her contacts. Turns out since Hale was part of her one point, she knew where she kept all those uh, her extra bodies and her plan and all this. So she tampered with the extra body, not doing anything crazy, but able to, you know, have a failsafe to control it and shut it down when she wanted to what she does right at the perfect time when she's fighting Maeve and uh, not only shuts it down but you know lets her know that she manipulated it in including the contacts to haunt the regular Dolores uh, so now well after that badass fight and clear winner Dolores uh, with the help of herself uh, Maeve's got Dolores and is heading back to Serac deeper in the rise with Caleb as he's approaching the insight barriers. Um, it's getting pretty wild here now. They even have one of those uh, riot drones there shooting a bunch of gas grenades, smoke grenades essentially. Caleb gets separated from those men Dolores hired. Um, and when he's about to get pegged by one of those smoke grenades, uh, someone comes and intercepts it, throws it back. Turns out to be Giggles, AKA Marshawn Lynch. Um, he tells him that, you know, Ash is in charge of demo. He's in charge of, uh, you know, crowd control. They find Ash and uh, they're together finally, and uh, which is awesome. I was hoping they'd come back. And they're all in charge of making sure these walls get down. And as they get the barriers down, they run in and uh, they notice that the way in is a uh, police drone, you know. And as they start heading towards it, one of the police officers notices that one of the men, or Caleb, heading towards, uh, you know, the copter and starts to shoot. And uh, right when he shoots, that's when. Uh, Giggles, aka Marshawn Lentz, runs up and ends up taking a shot for him and going down. He tells Ash to go save Giggles um, as he leaves. So it's very sad to see him, but I don't think he's down for good. I'm, I'm sure we'll see more Giggles. Uh, but Caleb gets away and he's on his way to Insight, man. Taking a breather too, with a nice camera angle, just like we saw Dolores with uh, episode one. So uh, exciting stuff here. So this is when we get to a touching part of the episode where Bernard shows up to the house, the address that uh, Lawrence Loris gave him. Tells Stubbs to stay put. Um, well, he can't move anyway, he's blasted. And he runs in to talk. And I start kind of putting two to two together here. Um, turns out this is actually Arnold's original house that his wife and kid uh, 
you know, lived at. And uh, as he gets in, he sees the pictures of Charlie. And then he meets Arnold's wife. And she's like in her 70s now, because I remember it was like 30 years ago when Arnold was alive. And uh, at first she doesn't recognize him, but then they have this real touching moment where she does, and she lets him know, you know, that, um, you know, he can, he can keep Charlie in his thoughts, but let go um, of Charlie from from hindering him, right? Because it's always been that that cornerstone has always grounded Bernard, but also kept him from really moving forward and evolving how he should, and taking the next next step. And uh, once he he sees, uh, you know, I think I believe it's her name's Lauren, Arnold's wife. She even calls him Arnold at one point. So I'm, I'm assuming his name is Arnold now, uh, not Bernard or Bernard. It's Arnold. Um, he's kind of, sort of the first successful human host hybrid jam. But again, touching moment. Uh, phenomenal acting from Jeffrey Wright here. Um, because it's so much emotion, right? It really just unlocks all these emotion, further emotional levels with him, within him, um, furthering that sentience and really showing him and letting him know what Dolores had in mind. Um, it's quite beautiful, isn't it? But we end up getting Dolores, um, you know, over an insight, hooked up in the basement to Rehoboam, to all these tubes that are zapping her information. And uh, well, Sirach's essentially deleting all her all her data one by one until he can find um, the Sector 16 data that he's looking for. Because Loris ain't talking. But as she's sitting there suffering, Maeve's uh, kind of looking um, off to the side and uh, I think kind of second guessing herself here. Um, because well, she's seeing one of her her fellow um, hosts in pain, and uh, you know what she was offered. It's starting to seem like it may not come into fruition. But uh, Caleb ends up getting a key card from uh, one of the uh, guards outside of Insight as he uses the uh, AI controlled gun, wrist gun, to kill the dudes out there. Lets that guy go, gets his key card. He's in Insight. He's over at that, that big front office room and he's about to plug in the strategy and start it. He might have even got it off um, with how the episode ends, but Sebastian ends up pulling up and is like, you know, look man, I've been expecting you and I'm going to kill you. And he's even got one of those things you use to choke people out with, you know, uh, kill them with, one of those metal wires. But uh, Caleb having the military training ends up taking the dude out and then like suplexing him pretty much. Um, on, on the steps and breaks his neck, Sebastian's neck, so bye-bye. And uh, kind of funny, I was thinking like, man, there's two two dudes who ended up either, you know, snapping their head or breaking their head right on the corner or something this season. In the first episode and in the last. So, uh, very uh, accidental death seeming, but uh, hey, it's like perfect timing and they out of the picture. So, I'm good with that. So Maeve shows up though, right after Caleb's fun and uh, gets him uh, pretty much handcuffed. I don't even know if they handcuff him, but they uh, apprehend him. And uh, that's when he finds out Maeve's a host as well. He's like, well, why are you working for them then? And she's like, well, he's got something for me. And uh, as uh, he, they go down to the basement, he finds you know that Rehoboam is probing her mind, trying to uh, get uh, information out. And then he's starting to talk to Caleb as he's trying to convince him, like, look, you're the villain here. You're the problem. Um, do you realize that she's using you? Why don't you go ahead and ask Rehoboam uh, what, you know, what's going to be the outcome if, as the strategy gets implemented? And again, we're assuming at this point the strategy's already been implemented, and it has. And uh, Rehoboam, you know, unleashes the data and basically says within, like, 15 years or whatever, the human race will be completely extinct because of, of what the the uh, the plan of Dolores. At this point, Caleb's pulled so many different ways. He kind of starts believing in Sirach, and he's like, "What the hell, Dolores? You know, th this was it. This was your plan." And it seems seems pretty like, you know, uh, 
upset. I mean, he's obviously very upset about it. And then we see um, Sarai crushing the USB drive, or the uh, drive there with the new strategy. And, uh, well, crushes that future situation. But again, I'm pretty sure Caleb got off the, uh, you know, the uh, drive into the system before Sebastian showed up. But um, it seems like all is lost. And as uh, Maeve's probing uh, Sirak about, you know, uh, what she was promised, he's like, he's like, yes, of course. And she kind of starts prodding a little bit. And as she's really prodding and trying to figure out what's going on, her her insight, her psychic powers pick up on the signal that Rehoboam is sending to Sirak. And we figure out that Sirak was a puppet the whole time. Now he is alive. It's not some host rock or a complete hologram. He is alive. And that is his physical body there. But we learn that he's got a little um, device planted in the back of his head and his ear. Or Rehoboam essentially using him like a puppet. At one point, he stopped trying to resist and is decided to listen. And so we learn completely that, well, Rehoboam is the artificial intelligent god of planet Earth and is essentially running all of humankind, even Sirach himself. And uh, Sirach's like, look, it's, it's more complicated than you can even think of. But, uh, Essentially, you have no choice right now, and he freezes her again with that device. You have to help me out, and uh, you have to do it without knowing that you're going to get what you want, which is pretty wild. So we're back down in the basement as they all enter. Um, Sorakis pretty much tells his men to, you know, to kill Caleb, get rid of him. Uh, you know, they're taking a while to figure out where that information is in Dolores' head, and Maeve's like, look, just move over, let me figure it out, and she goes into Dolores' psyche to really try to figure out what's going on, and as she enters, she sees the scene that we saw from the beginning of the episode, the scene of Dolores standing in the field, but it seems like Maeve pulls out of it quick, at least in the real world, and she seems very, like, like, taken back, like, really? Wow. And she immediately tells her, there's nothing in there, she's just in the middle of a field, and that's it. And, uh, you know, at this point, you really start thinking, thinking Maeve second-guessing herself. And uh, you then learn that, uh, you know, as it's shown, the scene is like Caleb getting pulled away, about to be killed, and him trying to stop himself, and Maeve kind of looking back and seeing Dolores kind of finally um, tither away, like she's finally going to be erased completely. We get to see what went on in Dolores' mind when Maeve jumped in. It was actually a longer scene than we think. Dolores and Maeve finally got to talk um, in the most peaceful, understanding way we've all been wanting them to do. And uh, they're both in their Westworld garb. Maeve being in her original, you know, with her daughter garb. And uh, Dolores is pretty much like, look, you know, there was two choices here that I was going to try to decide to make. It's either going to be annihilate all of them or tear their world down and re re rebuild one that we can both live in. Because ultimately, you know, this is all about the beauty of everything. You know, they built us with the notion of beauty. Um, to look at the world and see the natural beauty of everything to create art and create things themselves uh, And she can't deny that and uh, You know even Maeve's like so you never had the key in the first place. She's like no She's like I didn't trust myself with this key But I did have somebody I, I do have somebody I trusted with Bernard she didn't say Bernard, but that's when I clicked in my head she's like um, so I had to give it give it to them. But she's like, uh, you know, and this is when Maeve realizes the last memory that Laura stuck onto was the memory memory of everything beautiful. She's like, I let all of the the uh, terrible disarray and and horrible things that happened to me get deleted first. And she's like, the thing I, I kept on la kept on to last was all the beauty. And she basically looked off, and it was just this field of memories from. Her saying how, you know, she saw the good in humans. Um, everything from, 
you know, children and how uh, naturally innocent they are to other adults, helping them with little bits of kindness, to even seeing not only the beauty of that world, to seeing the beauty of other hosts and how there's this, at one point in the park she saw uh, Maeve with her daughter um, across the river as she was painting. And it was such a touching moment because it was really it kind of brought it all to a head that not only did she choose Caleb not for his violent tendencies like Sirach was trying to convince him with, but she chose him because his his ability to choose and um, and do good, and she chose Caleb for that reason. So she did choose Caleb, right? It was all part of her plan, but it was also part of her plan. To recruit Maeve as well and let Maeve realize finally that what she was doing was for the benefit of everybody and that she's given her a choice and you know it's up to you Maeve to decide what you want to do um, and you know at this point I think Maeve's truly convinced because she knows Sirach's not about that and that ultimately what Rehoboam predicted with the end of the world was going to happen it was just a matter of trying to keep the inevitable from happening um, but as Maeve uh, comes back, Dolores gets completely shut down. Uh, you realize that that last memory was the last bit of strategy that Caleb did upload into the system. So it worked, and that last memory of everything good and her plan... Um, essentially left you know this is where it's a little confusing but essentially gave control of the system to uh caleb and uh he was able to essentially tell rehoboam to erase itself and uh stop all of this um but uh as soon as you know they're doing that uh Sirach's trying to stop Maeve with the controller. She uses her mind powers to destroy the controller. She starts going into a badass sword slicing frenzy to take out all of the rest of his henchmen, leaving Sirach there wounded. Her and uh, Caleb destroy Rehoboam. Um, part of me too thinks that Dolores almost entered Rehoboam's mind, but after he deleted himself, that's not the case. But what happened once that final memory got uh, sucked up into or downloaded into Rehoboam, you saw a little glitch happening. And that's when uh, uh, Sirach was even, you know, before Maeve went to Slice Town, Sirach was like, what, what's going on? And it was that strategy being implemented finally. Uh, but it was so awesome. And, and then Maeve you know, tells Caleb that, you know, Dolores chose him for his ability to choose. And uh, if we finally get to see the, the last of that uh, military flashback in, in uh, Park 5, where Caleb stops all those men, other, his other soldier, um, his comrades, from uh, essentially going to Bangtown on these hosts. And it turns out another host sitting right next to uh, um, Hano is, well, or was Dolores. So at one point they put Dolores in that town. And... Uh, she registered that in Caleb and knew. So Caleb's been to the parks and she saw, um, you know, what he was truly capable of. Because, I mean, they even had those head scanners inside the army helmets there. So they were trying to get everything about, they, they knew about the soldiers. But again, that final command was for Rehoboam to delete itself. He's gone. I think Dolores is gone. Even Bernard says it because we're back at him. And uh, as him and Stubbs are uh, at a hotel, Stubbs is in an ice tub uh, trying to heal while uh, Bernard's taking the next step. He says, I think Dolores is gone. And I think that's more of a general statement, uh, wall breaking statement for everybody watching. Like, don't worry, Dolores is not fully dead. This is Westworld. But he says he has that connection with her and something, something's different now. But then... Uh, you know, he learns that, uh, you know, he had the key to the Sublime the whole time. And that little suitcase was one of those little headband things that lets him enter the Sublime. And he's like, well, I gotta go in. I gotta jump in the Sublime and figure this out. This is the next step. So uh, he sits on the bed while Stubbs is in the tub. 
pops on the uh, Sublime headset and it shows it opening and everything and he enters. Um, so I'm assuming that's what we're gonna see in uh, season four is uh, Bernard and Sublime, at least parts of it, because the way the episode ends, who knows. Um, but we get Caleb and Maeve walking out together, a new uh, you know, mutual admiration for each other and new teammates here working uh, in Dolores's uh, wake because uh, she was really there to set them free and let them make their own choices. And, and uh, you know, again, out of the chaos comes beauty, right? Crisis theory. And uh, well, we end on a great line, not completely in, but at least this part of the story, a great line from Maeve, because as they see the apocalypse before them, she's saying, well, this is a new world, honey. And in this world, you can be whoever the fuck you want. I loved it, man. And uh, Apocalypse Now, let's go, season four. Um, but, but, before everything ends, we get more William, finally, because we're like, where the hell William go this episode? Well, he's already making his way to Dallas International, and as he's entering, trying to uh, get the receptionist to let him have access downstairs. Um, security shows up, he pops a couple guys, he heads down to the basement. It's like, yeah. And trying to tell me nothing's going on here. Look at all of these host machines. He's walking down. He sees Shaloris down there. Um, pretty much back to normal. Besides, she kept her arm still all burnt and crusty as a reminder. And he's like, well, aren't you Dolores, though? And she's like, no, I'm separate from her now. And, uh, you know, I got some ideas of my own. And pretty much as soon as she says that, <laughs> out of the shadows comes... Well, we've all been waiting for it. Host William. That's right. Not just Host William, Host Man in Black. And uh, after a fight between Host Man in Black and Real William, Host Man in Black slits Real William's throat and kills him right then and there. And, uh, well, we're still going to have uh, some uh, Ed Harris, but it's going to be the Man in Black back in action, Host form, Terminator mode, as part of the Holoris recruitment team. And that's not just it. As the lights turn on in the rest of the facility, you see like 20 or even more host machines uh, rendering new hosts. We have no idea who they are, but she does have a copy of uh, uh, all the data from the park, so she can essentially make everybody again. So even though Dolores is gone, we have Maeve and, Maeve and Caleb on their own now working for Dolores' dream. Shaloris is on her own path, and that might be the evil path we thought Dolores was going to originally go down. And now the true beautiful path that Dolores wanted is going to be uh, taken in the hands of Caleb and Maeve. So very, very interesting ending, man. And uh, after the post credits, we get uh, a scene of Bernard uh, coming back to from the Sublime. But it's been a while, so long so that the entire room is covered in a at least like quarter inch layer of dust. And I mean, not only in the entire room, Bernard even, or Arnold. So it's been a long time again. Who knows how long he was in there? But uh, I'm curious where that's going to go. Uh, you know, what he's going to see. Did Dolores in the beginning zapped to the Sublime? Was that part of her plan? Like when she. Her last part of the plan was to have that last memory go into Rehoboam and infiltrate it. Did she also somehow send herself to the Sublime? Um, you know, there's still other questions that need to be answered. Where is Clementine and Hano? Where are uh, the uh, pearls of not only Kano's Dolores, but also Musashi Dolores? Where the hell is Lawrence Dolores at? Because that's still another uh, Dolores out there. Um, I think obviously these will all be answered next season, but it's going to be a while, guys. Uh, regardless, it was a phenomenal season of television, phenomenal season of Westworld. Only eight, ep eight episodes, like I said, but they did a really good job in just eight episodes. Um, and it was their choice, fast paced, uh, more straightforward story this season, but it all worked out. We still had the very Westworld vibes of confusing the fuck out of us. 
and uh, taking us on an amazing journey. We got some robot fights, some new technologies. We got to see the future world finally, something I've always wanted to see from the beginning of this show, the real world. And uh, I'm excited, man. So many things were set up um, for next season. So many new stories. I mean, Sirak's still alive too, so you never know. And he was left with the body of Dolores, so uh, who knows where they're gonna go? How much further in the future is it gonna be? And uh, you know, what's gonna happen with just three seasons left? We're the halfway point of the series. They said it's gonna be like six seasons, so. Well guys, let me know what you thought about this episode and this season down below. Um, let's get a discussion going. Let me know if you want me to come back with any other theory or discussion videos based on this season at all. Or if you just want to wait until uh, Season 4 comes out before you see more of Westworldia. Uh, anyway guys, I'm glad you joined me on this journey, uh, this inner journey. Uh, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, we will be back soon enough with another review. But until then, just uh, take it easy, would ya? Um, this is A.A. Ron uh, from Pan Nerdia, from Westworldia, out.